We just got back from seeing the ninth film in the Conjuring universe, <laughs> The Nun 2. Uh, the first one, of course, is not very beloved, and not too many people were excited for this one, but I'm always willing to give these kinds of films a shot. Why not? Why not? We got AMC A-list. It ain't yeah. costing us anything. <laughs> um, plus, we have the channel. We need to tell you guys whether or not it's worth your time. Um, okay. So I think just right out the gate, we might as well just get this out of the way um, for people who are like, get to it. Um, it's definitely better than the first movie. Yes. There's no doubt about that for yeah. me. Um, it's still pretty generic. It's still formulaic. It's still super safe. It's pretty much exactly what I expected it to be. Mm. I expected it because Michael Chavez, the director of The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, and The Curse of La Llorona, two painfully generic films. Um, and, and with The Conjuring 3, he took two beloved characters and somehow made them uninteresting. So, yeah, I didn't, I didn't expect much from this because of him, but the film does succeed where the first one fails in mm. some aspects, but man, is this movie just jump scare repetitive yeah. the nun is a one trick pony <laughs> like when i say the nun i'm talking about valak i'm talking yeah. about the actual nun same scares every single time with a different tiny little flavor to them it's just like <laughs> so we'll get into the plot and all that in a minute but for now what do you think yeah i like this one better than the first one for sure i i, de I it is generic but yeah. I think um, that there was some cool stuff. I, there's like some cool visuals in here that I, unfortunately, are given away in the trailer. <laughs> and course. that's like it. So I was kind of bummed because I think that's like my favorite part of the film. The trailer stuff. Well, the visuals. Like there's a lot of stuff. Because like, the whole thing with Valak is like the painting and it comes out of the painting at you. And I think that's really cool. And this film has some things where it's like coming out of like the moss, magazines. Yeah, on the wall or the magazines. And I really like that idea of it like manifesting in like visual like snow or whatever, you know, and like being able to yeah. to come at you. And I just it's not really a big part of the film. It's just there's a couple cool like jump scares, but they are in the trailer, so uh I wish there had been more of them because I think that's pretty creative. Um, and I, you know, they try to give some more backstory about Valak in this, which I oh, appreciated, but yeah. I felt like it was rushed. Yeah. And I feel like it sh would have been better to have it develop over both films. Yeah. Because I think what they're setting up is cool for what it means for the Conjuring universe, specifically for like, you know, other characters in the Conjuring universe, but it just felt really rushed. Sure. And with a film like this, you've always got to try to balance how much is too much, yeah. right? Because you're everyone's there for the titular character, right? They're, they're there for Valak. They're there for the nun. And yes. we already know what she looks like. We already know the gimmick, right? She's been in multiple films now. And so... You want to you want to try to scare the audience. You want to try to build this uh, atmosphere and 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 whatnot. Um, but it is getting more and more difficult to make it interesting, mm. you know, because Valak is such a one trick pony. There's nothing really to her. It's just kind of look creepy and come out of the wall and grab people in a jump scare, and that's really it. There, it's it doesn't have a personality, right? So it it, it gets tired quick. And because these films are safe and there really isn't many kills or violence or any of that kind of stuff. So you, you can't even really amp, you can't even change it up with showing different ways of graphically killing people, right? It's mostly just, it jumps out and the person screams and runs away or whatever, right? That's, that's the majority of the gag outside of a few exceptions. Um, so it, this is a hard balancing act when they are making something so safe. And the fact that you're dealing with a boarding school filled with tons of children, you know that the majority of the cast is safe. And yeah. anytime they're in peril, you're like, 
they're going to be fine. And right. even if they get injured, you're like, or, or, or they're in a scene where it's like, oh, are they going to fall to their death or this? And then you're like, no, they're not. So it, it really sucks the tension out of this. Um, now, a question that I had asked when we were going into this was, and I guess he's in the trailer, so I should have known, but I was barely paying attention to the trailer, to be honest. I was wondering, you know, are we going to address Frenchie, right? Because in the Conjuring film, we see that Frenchie still has the nun in him. And is that addressed? Yeah, I mean, Frenchie's like the main character of the movie. I would say Thaisa is like more of the background character who's just trying to solve the mystery to get to Frenchie throughout. And Frenchie is the focus of the movie. So, yeah, I mean, that was a surprise. I didn't realize that this was going to be a little more his film. Now, she's in it a good amount. Don't get me oh, wrong. Yeah, Thaisa for me is in it. But the, the, the story is centered around him and what's going on there. And then the, like, um, you know, secondary plot line is more of, like, what Sister Irene's doing on her way to him with mm -hmm. uh, her newfound sidekick played by Storm Reed from The Last of Us and Missing. Um, mm -hmm. Their chemistry between each other was fine. Mm -hmm. It didn't really have time to be much else, right? It's always yeah. these kinds of movies. This is why I always kind of roll my eyes, mostly because I'm just not a religious person, but mm -hmm. all they talk about, the whole spiel with them is like, faith, gotta have faith, faith, Jesus, God, faith. That's like 99.9% yeah. .9 of their conversations and their interactions, and I just, uh, I don't know. I, yeah, I think I'm just so, I don't care. I cared more about Frenchie yeah. and his relationship with this little girl yeah. and her mom. That was the heart of the movie for me, even though Thaisa and Storm are supposed to be part of that heart. I didn't really care about that all that much. It was fine. I, I didn't hate it. I was just kind of like, eh. I think that the like religious dialogue was really generic, yes. um, for sure. But like I like I was saying, like I feel like the the lore that they try to set up with Valak, like I was interested in that. It just like I don't think there's enough time spent on it. And I think part of it is because it was, it feels like it was just like put into the movie, like to, to try and give it more depth in a way. But I think that it was, it was an interesting like concept. And I think if they had explored that more, they could have maybe had some deeper dialogue between uh, the nuns, yeah. you know, because that's definitely possible. Um, Frenchie's relationship with this little girl character is really sweet. Yeah. Definitely was super invested in them. Um, and I think, like, the last part of the film, like, the last act, there's some really cool visuals. Like, one of them is, like, one of my favorite things that I've seen. Like, I loved it. I thought it looked so cool. <laughs> um, so I think that the film has, like, the nun looks better too. The nun does not look, like, as CGI. There was one scene yeah. that I laughed at because I thought it looked funny. Um, that was definitely meant to be scary, but it looked like an anamorph to me. Yeah. <laughs> but it, overall, I think that like the CGI that's used is way more like blended in with everything. So it does not give me that like jarring sense that the first one did. You know, this film is handcuffed to a degree, right? Because with the Conjuring film setting up Valak and, and you know, putting it into this prequel era, you know that Valak needs to, Valak's not going to get released, right? right. It's going to fail ultimately. Yeah. Uh, so you know that, that there is no chance of it winning and it has to end up like in Frenchie for that, you know, scene that yeah. they set up at the end of the nun. Um, so this movie and the last movie, because obviously there is no sequel, yeah. right? Because uh, Lorraine Warren and, and Ed, they, they vanquished it. Right. But well, they vanquished it in every fucking yeah. movie. So I, I don't know. You can do a sequel. I feel like they should have and that it should have went harder. Um, but this franchise is never going to go harder. But you don't yeah. have to go harder because I feel like Annabelle Comes Home, which is like my favorite Conjuring film, uh, that is like arguably PG-13 and there's like no deaths in it, mm -hmm. but there's 
great chemistry. There's a lot mm -hmm. of really fun dialogue, really spooky, inventive, creative, yeah. fun scenes. So it's not that it's, it has nothing to do with, when it comes to like paranormal stuff, you rarely need an R rating. So that's oh, not sure. even that's not even the case here. But with something like that, like I do think you need an R rating. I think Valley should be ripping people apart. You know that uh, doesn't matter. Anyways, so overall, it's a fine movie. Uh, I will say this though: this is something that I also like to say. We had a horrible theater experience. Uh, I don't think that affected our viewing experience at all. It just ex it, no. it just affected my mental state. But I was, I, I would have had the exact same opinion of the film regardless. But there was someone yeah. taking like selfies of themselves literally right in front of us the entire it was film. So weird. She was on like Snapchat. Yeah, Snapchat or something with some dude. And was just like taking so oh God, many like, pictures it was, of herself. She was just doing really quick too. And it was just, and then she was writing over them. And it's like, nobody gives a shit. Nobody <laughs> cares. You really think this guy cares about your like dark image? with some text over your face. Do you really need it? Do you really need it? Like, why are you even here? I know. That's what I was thinking. I was just like, why go to a movie? Like, but nobody's all, forcing you to see it. All three of the people in front of us were on their cell phone. Yeah. Probably 80% of the film. Yeah. They were, like, young kids. Of course. So, But it was lame. So we didn't like that. No. Obviously. So... Yeah, I mean, if you're looking for something better than the original, yeah, this is this is definitely there. If you're looking for something far superior that's gonna like redefine this and turn you around, no, no. But no. if you are a fan of the Conjuring films, like obviously you should see it. I don't think you'll be disappointed if you're a fan of the Conjuring films. If you're a fan of like the more spin-off type films. Yes. This is nowhere like near on the universe level universe films is what I was of meaning. the Conjuring movies. Yeah. The first two. Right. So. But like the yeah, the Conjuring universe films. Like if you're into the Conjuring Yeah, if you've liked everything, universe, if you've liked everything in the Conjuring yeah. verse, 100% you'll like this. But other than that, it's a fairly generic, predictable film that has some cool style shots. Mm -hmm. Um and good performances. I mean, yeah. Thais is great as usual. She's wonderful. You know, it, it's it, Frenchie's it, wonderful. Yeah, it, it has nothing like to do the, with all performances. All the actors do a good job. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's just kind of like generic. Paint by writing. number. That's all. Yeah. So, oh so, well. Yeah. So, not terrible. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> so that's that. All right, guys. Bye.